Hi guys, and welcome to Finish It Friday, episode 19. Once again, I'm showing my face in front of the camera so you can see me. Now remember, I've worked from home for three years, so I don't think I've done makeup or hair in forever. So it's probably not going to happen. So if you wanted me to be coiffed like some of the other ladies, I'm not going to be. I'm going to be natural because that's my life. Okay, let's get to where we left off on Wednesday. Okay, so here are the items we prepared on Wednesday. And we're going to be featuring the framed florets set today. Love it. I wonder if it's framed floré because is this French? Because E-T-S would be an A sound. I don't know. We'll figure it out. All right, so we're going to go back to the measurements so we have our base card which started off at five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a fourth our normal layer down which is four by five and a fourth we're gonna have two um, of the parakeet parquet parakeet party parquet so i'm doing now flore and parquet okay so the parakeet party Two of those. One is three and three fourths by two and three fourths. The other is three and three fourths by one and a half. And then we have our basic white again that is three and a half by two and a half and three and a half by one and a fourth. I also have, oh, where did I put it? All right, I'm going to have to get out from my drawer here. Sorry. Also going to use some ribbon. Uh, the examples that I have to show you, we've used uh, the blends and the stamp and write marker, so we'll show you in which order we did that. But let's go ahead and get started. So I am going to emboss, dry emboss, both of these in gingham. The gingham folder. So let's look at our base to see what we need. All right, to emboss with a regular standard folder, we're gonna need one and two threes. I think we have to use the two two, but I don't know. We'll figure it out. So here's one, here's a three, here's my folder. Always make sure that the fold, the bind, goes in first. You don't want to crack any of your folders. So we're going to do the parakeet party first and then we'll come back and do the basic white. So let's go ahead run that through. And guys, I would love to hear from you. Um, I only have one person who usually comments on my videos. Thank you, Marguerite. Um, but I do want to hear from you. Do you like the fact that I'm showing myself at the beginning? Do you, I know Marguerite likes having the directions or the dimensions, but I need to hear from you guys. I mean, I, I appreciate your thumbs up. I appreciate your likes. Please tell your friends about me and have them subscribe. But what else do you want to see? Also, I have one of my local friends who states that she would like to get but now she can stop by the house, of course, would like to get um, the measure. Like after I do this on Wednesday, she'd like to stop by on Thursday and grab the items, you know, like a little card kit. I don't know. I think it would be difficult to do that for anyone who's not local. But let me know because I do this to share. And if I don't hear from you, I don't know what you want me to share. So I appreciate any and all comments. All right, so let me move this up to the side. Okay, and let me bring this up to the camera. Hopefully you can see that's the gingham. So very pretty. All right, so let's bring out our other pieces here. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to now, I'm gonna have to use tearing tape. I probably, since this isn't such a tight pattern, I probably could use my stamp and seal, but I don't want to risk it just because. So let's put some tear and tape down. 
I might try. Yes, tear and tape it does take up a lot of time. Sorry. But I might try using the stamp and seal on the smaller pieces. We'll see. All right, let me burnish those edges so I can get that off. Probably get my take your pick tool. All right. So on this one, I'm not doing any stamping on that first layer. I'm just using the embossing to create the uh, look. So let's put that down. All right, let me try. I'm really, I'm afraid to try this, but I'm going to try it. Let me grab out my stamp and seal. See if I can do this without ripping. I'm just not going to press very hard. Okay. Now on this, I think I'm going to do, oh, I thought I heard someone behind me. I thought someone was going to interrupt the video. I'm going to do this this way, and I'll wait on these parts. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's get out that flame, framed florets. So pretty. And I think what I'm going to use on this one, if I haven't used it yet, let me grab out. I'm just going to do... Yeah, I think I'm going to do it like that. All right. Oh, I need my, so let me get here, here. I need my stamp and my piercing mat. Now, of course, it's still pretty ugly. I'll go on the back side because that's really busy. I haven't changed it yet. All right. So let's go ahead, put it in the middle there because I don't want to get any paper edges. And what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to do this. And this at the bottom. Hmm, I didn't get that one as dark. And then I'm going to go ahead. Let me look at my sayings. So I'm going to do the for a special person on a special day. And just a reminder that you're loved. So let's do for a special person on a special day. Oh my gosh, sorry. Another. my daughter's up too. I hear her hear the microwave going so she's probably getting her coffee or tea rewarmed for the day. Okay so that looks good. Let me go ahead and get another block out. I have nine million blocks out now. Oh let me lay that down. Since these are photopolymer you can curve them a little. When I laid that one down, it did curve. I don't want it to curve. Let's go ahead and do that. Take one of these little flowers. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I should count how many blocks I need. And I'm going to go ahead and take Stampin' Write marker. Don't use blends on your stamps. Use Stampin' Write markers. And I'm just going to kind of color over that. Oops, sorry, I'm off the camera. I'm going to stamp off once because I just want to have a little bit of a of a watermark look. Let's do that again. I don't guess I would step it off that much. It's not that dark. That's me and my thumb. Got to get some lotion on me. All right, let me go ahead and go that way. See if there's a little bit left over. All right, just a little bit of a color there. Now on this. 
coloring in you can use either i'm going to use my blends here remember when you're coloring with blends the first layer all the way to the edge because it does spread out a little bit so when i go over the first time and remember unlike the stamp right markers if you go over with the stamp right markers sometimes you'll see your lines with the blends you will not because they're alcohol based so now you can see where I'm going to just go ahead and go to the edge now I didn't get that one at all see how now I can just go in and fill in those extra spaces with my bullet point sorry hopefully my head oh good it's not I had to look over to see if my head was all right so there you are with that I have no stamps left in that pretty much pretty much all gone all right so let's get this all over here let me put that over here so now I think we're going to be ready let me grab this I'm just going to cut a little piece off here so I'm just going to rub roll rub I'm going to put this around here oh, I should get out my reverse tweezers because they let me see let me see if I can find it really quick so I have them under here yes all right love the reverse tweezers because watch what happens here especially since this ribbon likes to fray so I have that like that right I have it pulled across like that we're gonna come in here I'm just going to hold that for me while I tie. And I need a longer piece. I always cut too small. In fact, let me go see if I can go around twice. Nope, that makes it too small again. All right, so let's just go around the one time I'm going to go ahead and do that square knot which is pretty much easy to do with just your two fingers but now I'm going to hold this down why I try to do a bow you guys know me I'm usually using my bow easy when I do bows because I have a hard time with bows. It's just me. All right, let's go ahead, chop that off. I don't know if that's going to stay. The one end's really close, and it's not. Uh, I usually don't do bows on air. Maybe if I do it upside down, because that that side's a little bit longer. go all right so let's go ahead now put these on and then let's go ahead and use some mini glue dots to pop that up make sure they're down always one backing that doesn't want to come off and this is the one there it goes all right I'm going to cover up some of those branches not a big deal oh my goodness and there you go nice simple little layout 
using some good sizes. You could put some, uh, a pop up here. You could do a die cut. You could do an embellishment. You could do another bow. You could do another focal point. And maybe like an, a set of leaves up there would be nice. Okay. Let me show you what prompted or inspired this card. This is a, let's see, Kathy Hickerson from Missouri. This is a swap I got. And I have no idea back, but look, this is an old one because see, this is tempting turquoise. Let me see if I can, you can't, I don't know if you can see, there's just a little bit of a difference. But this was Tempting Turquoise and Pear Pizzazz. So this is our Tahitian Tide, which is different. If I held two full card stock sheets up, you'd see the difference. All right. So now exploring with just the same colors, because, you know, I'm trying to show you guys how you can do this all with just two basic colors in this um, instance, some designer paper and the same stamp set. So here's another one. Now this one, we use the designer paper as our layer. This is colored with the markers. This is colored with the blends. Let me bring it up so you can see a little bit of the difference. So markers, blends, and that designer paper in the back. And then here's another one where we used uh, the Tahitian Tide and the Parakeet Party but we'll use designer paper as our um, focal point and then stamp right on the designer paper and then use some of these, what are these called? These are from the new catalog. Pastel adhesive backed sequins. But I don't know if you can see fabulous colors and there's a little bit of a facet to them so they're not flat. So yes, only two extra examples today. Sorry, it's been a busy, busy week at work. And so by the time I get off at five, my time, I just, it's supper and then it's just decompressing time. So I haven't had a lot of time to stamp in the evenings. So that's why there's only two examples, but it goes to show that you could do this. And if you wanted to, you could also do it completely this direction. Have, if you have a tall greeting or put the greeting here and have like a tall, like a leafy vine going up that way. So lots of possibilities. Well, thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Give me a comment. Tell me what you'd like to see. And we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.